everyone. Watch till the end of the video for a surprise. I'll see you there. About a month ago, I had what I think may have been a glitch in the matrix. It all began as a normal day. I got up in the morning, went through my morning routine, went to work, and then went home. Nothing strange happened that day, but I do remember seeing some heat lightning off in the distance. It was a relatively sunny day, with a few clouds in the distance. This will come up later. On my way home from work, I did notice a lot of construction, and I mean a lot, way more than usual. It looked like it was on telephone poles, underground wiring, and etc., but I didn't really pay much attention to it. Here's where it begins to get weird. When I got home, the TV was on. I'm pretty sure that I turned it off in the morning, as I usually do after watching the news. I had microwave pasta for dinner while I watched the TV. After dinner, I went to my bedroom, where I also have a TV. I got changed for the night and went through my routine per usual. I went to bed, not really ticked off about anything that happened that day. Here's where it gets really interesting. In the middle of the night, I woke up, and I don't do this too often. This time, I felt something really weird. A really strange feeling was in me. For some reason, the TV was on. It was turned to Cartoon Network, which I never watch. The time on the clock was 12, and it was flashing as if the power went off. I was kind of freaked out, and about 10 seconds after I woke up, I saw a flash outside and heard the loudest noise that I have ever heard. I was sure that I was struck by lightning. From this point, until I woke up in the morning, I have no memory. I woke up to my alarm clock sound at my usual wake-up time, which is 7.30, and I went through my routine as I thought about what the heck happened last night. When I got to work, which is near my house, I ask around to see if anyone has any recollection of a storm last night. My one co-worker said she had. Then she told me this same story, word for word. I was not under the influence of any drugs or alcohol, and nothing like this has happened to me before. I never used to believe in glitches or magic, but now, I think I do. What happened? Story by you slash Wenchity Wrench Wench I've dragged my heels on typing this out because there's just no normal explanation and I don't have anything that can even be argued. But how could it have even happened? You know the drill. It's also about menstrual blood, so trigger warning for anyone that needs that, I guess. So, I was sitting in bed with my husband on top of our new light blue comforter. I was wearing his pajama pants and had made the remark that I was tempting fate because I was about to start my period. And for some reason, I always manage to bleed through onto these damn pants, even when I'm not due to start. But he's amazing and doesn't care, and it's just funny at this point because it just washes out, no harm, no foul. Anyhow, if you're a female, you know that feeling you get when you think you may have suddenly started your period Versus when you know. I had a split second knowing and swore as I reached down and felt blood, then looked down, simultaneously hopping up to reveal a baseball-sized spot of blood on my new damn comforter. No print, just light blue, making the stain as obvious as it gets. 
My feet barely touch the floor as I run to get to the bathroom without creating a further mess. And I'm dropping the pants as I go so I don't make that worse too as I've got blood on my hands. The bathroom is right around the corner from the bed and he had been sitting there beside me reading something and hadn't said anything to my commotion. But it all had happened in the span of about three seconds. I am rummaging around for cleaning supplies and I call out to him. It's fine, it's fine, I'm just bleeding out, everything's fine. Just riffing off that everything's on fire, but then he calls back. What are you talking about? Why do you hop up? Are you okay? To which I stop what I'm doing and pause for a second, looking down at myself. I mean, there's oblivious, and then there's oblivious, I'm thinking. So I walk out slowly, pantless, and with blood on my legs and stare at him dryly, and say in a tone and go, No reason. He jumps and is like, Oh shit, are you okay? Man, you called it with the pants. And I'm like, I'm fine, thanks. But I'm sorry about the pants and the blanket. I can get that out if I get it into the wash now, though. Can you get up, please? And I'm seeing this as I'm walking over to him. So I'm also seeing this right as I'm realizing that there is no blood on the bed. The baseball-sized dark red blood stain is not there. And given that, I'm standing there covered in it. There is some momentary silence and staring, and a general what the hell happened for a minute, before I suddenly get the urge to run back to the bathroom to go for the pants that I dropped on the floor a minute ago. The perfectly fine, now entirely bloodless spotless pants, that I am now holding with the same bloody hand that I yanked them off with. I have no idea. I don't know what else to say. There's just not a thing to say, really. We were both sober. Blood was there, substantially, and then it wasn't. This happened again with something else a few weeks later, but I'll make a separate post for that. Story by you slash Oneida Mojo this happened about three weeks ago. I have a day off work and my cousin Harold asked if I could drive him to pick up new tires for his truck. They were being sold in a town just over an hour away and basically it was a two-lane country highway straight shot all the way there. About halfway there, he points and says, Hey, Look at that house over there. It has vultures all over it. I've never seen that before. Sure enough, on the left side of the road was an old two-story country farmhouse with seven to eight vultures sitting on the roof. There was another three or four circling the property overhead. Immediately, I blurted out that maybe they smell something dead inside and we just stared as we drove by. Anyway, we get his tires and it slipped from our mind. On the way back, we had the windows on the truck down. When, suddenly, we got a good whiff of rotting flesh and sure enough, we were passing by that house again, but we didn't stop and went home. I couldn't stop thinking about it, and I called Harold to tell him so. He said that he couldn't even sleep, as it was bugging him too. I proposed that the right thing to do was to go back to the house, get the address, and call it to the police for a welfare check. What if someone was dead inside? What if they had family? He agrees, and we immediately set off. As the title suggests, we couldn't locate the house. We drove all the way to that town where we got the tires, then turned around and we couldn't find it on the way back either. It was like 
the house ceased to exist. There was no house, no vultures, a smell of death that matched what we saw the previous day. We even went out and did the same thing the next day with no luck. But now, the more I think of it, what we saw made no sense. Although it was a country highway, there still had to be thousands of cars and trucks on it every day, not to mention police patrols. Surely, one of those would surely have noticed a creepy old farmhouse with a shit ton of vultures on it and put two and two together. I still can't explain it, and it still bothers both me and my cousin. Story by you slash Mindless Airport 9003 When I was in 10th grade, my classmate Julia asked me to accompany her to meet her friend in a different class. The class was quite far and after a while, we returned to our class. Since the hallway was so crowded, I walked behind Julia and was about a meter apart. I saw Julia enter the class, and when I was about to enter the class, suddenly, I was already sitting in my chair with Sarah. I don't remember how I made my way to my seat, but I was suddenly eating chips with Sarah. I saw Julia enter the classroom, and Julia screamed when she saw me. She was very pale and kept saying that I should be behind her. But suddenly... Another memory entered my head. I walked out of class with Sarah and bought some chips in the cafeteria when the bell rang. We went back to the classroom and ate some chips together. Before I could say anything, Sarah told Julia that she had been with me the whole time. Because Julia was a bit hysterical, some students tried to calm her down, but they all said that I had indeed returned to class a few minutes ago. I didn't say anything about me actually remembering that we went to another class together because I didn't want to be thought of as crazy and I didn't know about the glitch's existence at that time. Julia's friends in another class didn't see me because I didn't enter the class and I just played on the phone in front of the door. But she remembers Julia telling her that I accompanied her there. None of the other students saw me going with Julia during that time. Julia and everyone thought that this was a ghost story, and Julia got a lot of amulets from the temple that day. I don't know what happened that day, but I certainly can tell Julia that I actually went with her. Everyone, what do you think really happened? Story by you slash I am Poom I've had many unexplainable occurrences throughout my life, but a couple of weeks ago, I've had my very first glitch in the Matrix type event. What makes this one so amazing is that my husband was there for the whole thing. Otherwise, I might have written it off as my lizard brain deceiving me once again. My husband is a car guy, and he is very analytical about how he operates his cars. He has all these little gadgets and doodads, so when he starts his car, he turns the key forward and lets all the electrical stuff start up before fully turning the key to start the engine. It probably only takes 4 seconds total, and yes, this is important. So, we hop in the car one warm Saturday morning to go get all the goods for a giant breakfast feast. And as he is turning a ski over in a slow weird way, he says out loud, Did I bring my sunglasses? And without skipping a beat, his car, in her car voice says, You did. Just like she was answering his question. We both just looked at each other in shock for a second before confirming that we each heard the same thing. He looked down and saw his sunglasses sitting in the cup holder, 
So she was right, too. By then, he had fully started the engine, but his phone had no time to connect, and why would it answer his questions anyways? His car has buttons on the steering wheel that make it speak, so he pressed the button, and sure enough, that's his car's voice. My husband is a no-nonsense military man who doesn't like to think or talk about these types of things. We have had paranormal experiences that forced him to acknowledge that this stuff happens, but he would rather pretend that it doesn't exist. I'm sort of on the opposite end of the spectrum, and I was super excited about the whole thing. Like if one of you has a plausible explanation for this, I'm going to be disappointed as hell because I love this stuff. But anywho, that's my story. Story by you slash Lunar Wolf 1991 This takes place in Michigan in the summer of 2006. My friends who I will call K and P for this were hanging out with me. We were walking in the woods and we found this old house set into a hill and it was filled with water. We looked in all the windows and my friend K was going to open one of the windows and I told him, no, don't. You'll let all the water out. We should go get our swimming trunks and then use this place as our swimming spot. So, we all left and got our swimming trunks and came back to the house. I've seen a sunlight on the roof and I said, Hey Kay, you think we can get into the house from that? He said we can try. So we climbed up to the roof and it was one of those hook lock windows so we opened it and jumped in. The water was so clear that you could see everything. Now, this is where the glitch starts to come into play, but we didn't pay attention. We just thought that the furniture was nailed down and that's why it wasn't floating. So we used this place as our swimming pool for about a month. And one day, me and K and P just go up to the house not to swim, just to hang out because it was a cool place. I turned and started talking with P, and I don't remember what we were talking about, but I turn back around and see K opening up the window, and I yell, Why isn't the water coming out? K says, I don't know. Then I say again, asking why isn't the water coming out, and K says that he doesn't know, then P says that we should just go in. K and I say all right, and we go in the house, and it's at this point that we figure out that the water isn't ordinary water. You could breathe in it, and talk in it, and we thought that this was the coolest thing ever. For about a week and a half, we would go into this house and just chill after we found that out. Then, the water disappeared, and after that, my friends and I forgot how to get to the house, and every time we tried to find it, we would get really bad headaches. I really wish that I could remember where it was in the woods. Story by you slash Lemon Pepper 2021 Okay, so this happened quite literally an hour ago. Honestly, I'm baffled. It's usually because he's dropped his dummy out of the cot and it's a case of putting it back in his mouth and leaving the room. I go upstairs and move him back to lying down and move his blankets. I couldn't find his dummy anywhere, albeit it was dark in the room and I searched everywhere. I searched all under the cot with my phone light, searched around where he could have possibly threw it on the floor, searched every gap in the slots at the side of the cot, picked my son up again 
and put his blanket on the floor. I shook the blankets quite vigorously. Nothing in the cot, nothing attached to my son, and absolutely nowhere to be seen. At this point, I'm stressing because my son is screaming the house down and won't go back to sleep without his tummy. My girlfriend comes upstairs, picks up my son, moves the blanket, and at first nothing was there. But within a split second, I saw it coming through the mattress. Like I actually saw it come through the mattress. Where my girlfriend was stood, she didn't and wouldn't have seen it and was in and out the bedroom in a few seconds. And it never really registered to me until I came back downstairs with what I just have witnessed. I've tried fathoming how on earth it happened, but I swear to God, that cot was completely empty when I took the blanket out. I shook it like mad, put it on the floor, picked my son up, and checked. Story by you slash Yulka95 So, I sleep in a very small rectangular room, single-sized bed which is attached to the wall from the long side, and there's a bedside table right at the foot of the bed where I keep my nightlight. I really can't sleep in the dark, and I place my phone there while I sleep. I wake up at 3 a.m. because of the very hot weather and I am sweating a lot. I decided to make a trip to the bathroom and I usually bring my phone with me everywhere, so I proceed to stretch to the bedside table to grab it. Only to see that it wasn't there. It wasn't anywhere. So keep in mind that I use the nightlight so the room was bright enough for me to be able to see if it was there or not. It just wasn't. I go on and turn on the main light to look for it. I thought, maybe I kicked it in my sleep, since my feet can reach that spot easily while in bed. I looked under the bed behind the bedside table, literally everywhere around the area, and it's just nowhere. So at this point, I'm pretty sure it must have creeped somewhere pretty hidden, so I sit on the bed trying to catch some air from the fan, since I was sweating a lot trying to look for the damn phone. And as I was thinking that I'll just look for it in the morning, I turn around to the bedside table, and believe me or not, it was there all the time. I don't do alcohol or drugs, the room was lit and all, and nobody else could access the room, and I've looked at that spot multiple times before finally seeing it. Also at that point, I was very awake while I was looking for it, so it couldn't be just the drowsiness for having just woken up. So, what was messing with me? Story by you slash Mostly nothing. This all happened about 10 years ago, and I was in my early 20s. I lived in an old city in Eastern Europe. My house was large and old, close to downtown, and partitioned into 5 to 6 apartments. I lived in the smallest. It was a one bedroom, one kitchen, and a bathroom, and was almost below ground level. Not sure what you call that in English. Anyway, there was a large gas oven or stove in the kitchen that we used for both cooking and heating. One night, my then girlfriend and I lay in bed, half asleep, when a small painting that was hung on the wall above me shifted. Mind you, I've been living there for the past ten years. Nothing ever moved. No breeze as I only had a door and a window, and they were both on the same side. I freaked out. I jumped out of bed, turned the lights on, and I couldn't understand how that painting suddenly moved. I went to the kitchen to look around, and noticed that the gas was turned on in the oven or stove, but no flame. It was basically leaking gas, 
I switched it off and quickly realized that had the painting not moved on the wall, I was probably going to die that night. Nothing like that ever happened before or since, and I almost forgot had I not stumbled upon this sub randomly. And here are the top comments for my last video. Welcome to Miss Creepy Tales Riddle Time. If you know the answer, feel free to leave it in the comments. And the winner gets to be featured in the next video. I'm tall when I'm young. I'm short when I'm old. And every Halloween, I stand up inside a jack-o'-lantern. What am I? Hello everyone, it's your creepy sister here. Thank you so much for watching the video. I really appreciate each and every one of you. But I would also like to thank my amazing patrons, my top tippers, and my dearest channel members. Thank you very, very much. I really appreciate it with all of my heart. If you want to support the channel further, you could also choose to become a patron, a tipper, or a channel member. But remember, it's appreciated, but never a requirement. I would also like to announce that we have merch now. The link is in the description of the video, along with all my other social media links, like my Discord server, Twitter, Instagram, and others. You can connect with me and send your stories there. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't yet, and comments are highly appreciated. And remember, your fear feeds me.